Hello everyone and welcome back once again to Loco. But today we're gonna to be dealing with some water. Now what exactly do I mean by we're gonna be dealing with water? Well if you've watched the ploppable buildings video on the channel, you will have seen us build a water tower. Now the thing is with these ploppable water towers now, this may be subject to change at a later date, maybe not. But at the moment, the ploppable water towers are empty. And they don't fill themselves. So we need to get a couple of tankers and take some water up there. We need water tankers and got our loco, which is fully steamed up, as you can see, ready to go. We need water tankers. Worth noting that, by the way, we have got a second alco down there. there. Has been a little bit going on on this railroad since we were last here. And one of the things going on is the addition of this so thousand we're gonna hit buy and put the break on a second I don't know if this has any no it doesn't not as of yet have any of variations worth noting that there are more color variations being added to different rolling stock as we go through the game but, um don't actually have enough money to buy two tankers at the moment so i'm going to be a bit crafty i'm going to come here click f8 find the flatbed we're stood on I'm going to reset it and we're going to sell it for now as you can see we've now got our 8000 we can buy a second water tanker ideally I wouldn't want to be selling one item of rolling stock to get another and go and back and forth but in this instance, unfortunately, it's a necessity. You stop there, my friend. Pretty much got it lined up, look. Worth noting, you don't have to be exact with this. Once your whatever it is, be it a wagon, a train, whatever as soon as it's in line with the water tower it will auto switch on auto switch off certainly in the case of this particular water tower off the brakes there is a slight gradient in the rail i think still it certainly appears to be so we can roll that on. And what we do is put that one there. That one. There is a little water gauge on the end here, look. We can see when it's full. Just like that. Roll off the water again. Let him roll down to here. We'll hitch them together. Then we'll grab a loco. 
and take it up where we need it. Now I could take this loco, but I actually want this one because of the direction it's facing. Seems we're going to have to do a bit of shunting around. Mapping out, so I want to run around and I want to couple on the far end and run in reverse. And hopefully that will come apparent later in the video. But I'm going to go get started and you can enjoy some lovely cinematics of us running by. So on our journey, I just thought we'd take a quick break so I could introduce you to Winston Yard. Now this is still a little bit of a work in progress. Most of the track works in, apart from the motive power depot, which is going to be based all around here somewhere. And what we have is kind of an interchange yard. So uh, if you look at the two tracks on that I'm pointing out with the receptacle right now, they are your main line through. And you've got one, two, three, four, five, six tracks which are currently disconnected from the network. See there's some over here. Point work that can potentially join in and when I built it were joined in so it'd just be a case of move this piece of track put a point in connect the main line back up 
but for now that yard's not going to be used unless we get incredibly busy so over this side as you can see we have one two three four five departure and arrival tracks so whenever someone comes down to the yard they'll arrive in one of these yards one of these tracks sorry and either detach the train and run around or reverse depending on the setup of their train and where they're going if they happen to come from the north and they're going down to heavy goods for example they probably won't come into the yard if you're carrying standard goods and you're going down to heavy goods you won't enter the yard at all but for everything else you're likely to pull into one of these five roads then we will have a resident shunting locomotive that will be here and his job will be to take the trains as they're arriving here bring them over to this classification yard which is four tracks and basically break down trains and rebuild them depending on where the final destination is eventually the idea is you need to build something up at the docks and it requires 10 lumber three heavy goods so a train's going to bring probably up to 10 wagons of lumber in so that's 40 lumber if i can get the motive power to actually haul that much lumber in one go but he's going to bring that in and then you're going to break down the train and put it so there's 10 lumber over here and then there's going to be a rake of wagons with heavy goods which is what's actually here at the yard at the moment you can see got a temporary wheel chock which is actually a sign is the yard is on a bit of a grade and so the brakes aren't quite enough to hold these at the moment yeah you'd get a train in of probably 10 of these the yard shunter will detach three of them put them with the 10 lumber into fixed train over here and then pull it out and put it back in the yard ready to run out and as you can see on these classification yards there is a switch about halfway down on four of the five roads so a smaller train can be put in run round and potentially it doubles the capacity of the yard for shorter trains or if you've got a longer train you can use the entire length of the run which goes all the way over to there And as I say, the yet to be built motive power depot will come off this point. So you'll have a turntable in there, you'll have refueling facilities, whether it's diesel or water for steam, and some engine sheds, so on and so forth. That will all be down there. And talking of oil another quick distraction is we come over here is the flying quicker to fly over it is drop down so at this end of the yard have a bit of a lead which will allow for shunting and we are going to have a sign here fact let's do it right now and i can demonstrate how these signs work so you orient take the sign how you want it click and press f on it if you want to flip it i found that you have to disengage flip and click it again and you can see the shadow actually has flipped it um 
and this is going to be shunt up. Damn it. Unfortunately, if you press the M button, it does go into the map. Again, early access, so that's something that will eventually be fixed in the code where it says, okay, we're creating a sign, disengage all shortcut keys for various things such as map or whatever else controls may be present in the game. So you can actually type. You type in what you want, press close. And if we jump out of here, you can see we have our sign that says shunt limit. So from here, the line continues in its splits. So if you're heading south to heavy goods from the yard, you can take this switch here and this one here. You do actually need to add a crossover there which will allow you onto its right side track because this will be double tracked down. And as this map is roughly based on American practice, it'll be right track running. So anyway, back to this line. One just comes round, heads along. And there is another switch here. If you've come down the main, and want to access it directly. But here we have our oil well. This is where we get our crude oil from. As you can see, it's set up still to build more stuff. There's an example of option two, three heavy goods. 10 lumber required, which will build another one of these oil pumps. So this will be our crude oil industry and it will most likely be the job of the yard shunter for now to run a local trip working down here, grab crude oil, bring it to the yard. And then when we've finally built the refinery, wherever that's going to be, Another train will take the crude oil out of the yard down to the refinery. Let's just skip along, get back on our loco, and just give you an idea of where we're heading on the map. This is a great feature. You can switch your which is on the map. So Eventually we'll be able to have multiplayer running and you can just have a dispatcher who you can use Discord, TeamSpeak, whichever voice chat client you want. Get everyone in there. There can be a dispatcher, you can ask for a route and he can set the route for you all remotely and you can just focus on running trains. Anyway. The route we're going to take is through that track here and up our mountain all the way up here past the passing loop and we are going to be at cross over there cross over there here which is where we load our water tower and just give you an idea where the line continues on. Mess that up. Back over here, Nick. So yeah, up the mountain. And then here, there will be a small town eventually. And this leads into quarry which will have a small yard and as you can see return loop 
to avoid having to run your train round. But there will be the option to run the train round if you so prefer. So with that said, let's get sorted and get our train up the mountain. So, having got our train successfully up here, all that's left to do now is should be able to press this button. And our water tank should be filling. And correspondingly, if I can get out the shadow, which unfortunately I can't, that's going to empty our water tanks at the same time. Let's um, no, unfortunately we can't. Sun's there. Now, is this end we can't unfortunately see. Test it has worked. Be that. Okay. Water. So it may be that I need to fine tune things. The important thing is we got the water up here. And that's going to conclude this video, actually. Uh, if you do like the look of this game, there is a link down in the description so you can go purchase it and try it out yourself. Or join the Discord. Get yeah, fun chat, find out about the game, find out the future plans, and, yeah, basically find out if it's for you. Anyway, that is going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now. Hey everyone, just wanted to add this little section of video in to show that I was being a bit of a numpty. Um, I don't know quite how I managed to mess it up before, but as you can see, the Wagons have been turned around, so they've been run down the hill, come back. Locos are also facing another way, but essentially they are in the same place. Otherwise, as you can see, full of water. If we press the button, you can see that they are emptying, just like so. And 
we were to have something parked underneath, that would be spraying the water back out. So yes, they do work. Yes, it's something I was doing, which I suspected all along. I, I knew that they worked. Other people had them working. It was something I was doing wrong. So I just wanted to add this little bit extra to the end of the video and clarify that water towers do work and my idea is a success. I can bring water up, fill up the water tower, and then in future, whenever I have a steam loco coming up here, if this needs a top off, we can do so. So that really is going to be it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.